You've spent nights reviewing for an exam, felt confident, but the moment you sat down, your mind went blank. Or maybe you listened to a brilliant lecture, thought you understood everything, and days later, it was all gone. You're not dumb, and your memory isn't broken. The problem isn't effort, it's the method. We were all taught what to study, but no one ever taught us how the brain actually remembers. We assume effort equals retention, but your brain doesn't reward effort, it rewards design. The real difference between top students and everyone else isn't intelligence. It's that they've learned how to make their brain want to remember. Memory isn't a test of willpower. It's an art of structure. Once you understand how it works, you'll realize anyone can build long-term memory not by studying harder, but by studying smarter. So in this video, we'll explore five powerful science-backed methods to strengthen your memory and transform how you think. Think back to remember. Most people study by rereading notes or memorizing key points. It feels productive, but it's an illusion. Psychologists call this the illusion of fluency. You think you understand something just because it feels familiar. But your brain doesn't remember what you see, it remembers what you recall. Memory works like a muscle. It grows through use, not storage. That's why real learning comes from output not input, that's the power of active recall. When you force your brain to retrieve an idea, you strengthen that neural pathway and make it harder to forget. After reading, close the book and ask, can I explain this in my own words? Or try the Feynman technique, teach what you learned as if to a friend. Wherever you stumble, that's your gap. Review, then recall again. Studies show testing yourself three times beats rereading 10, recall, doesn't just test memory, it creates it. So don't ask, do I get it? Ask, can I explain it without looking? That's when learning becomes real. Learn in rhythm, not rush. Time is the most underestimated tool for memory. We think repetition equals learning, but the brain actually resists back-to-back -back input. When you cram in one sitting, your brain treats it as temporary, stored briefly, then erased. But when you review right before forgetting, the brain reopens that pathway, strengthens it, and makes the memory last. That's the spacing effect. Psychologist Herman Ebbinghaus showed that within 24 hours, we forget half of what we learn. Each well-timed recall resets that curve, making memory more durable. Top students use this rhythm consciously. They don't cram, they schedule, day one learn, day three review, day seven recall, day 14, reinforce. Each interval tells the brain, this matters, keep it. Over time, that rhythm turns short-term learning into long-term memory. Use tools like Anki, Notion, or even a handwritten planner to automate your memory rhythm. Learning then becomes like breathing. Inhale knowledge, exhale review, and let time make it stronger. See it to remember it. If I gave you a list of numbers, you'd forget them in minutes. But if I told you a story, you'd remember it for years. Because your brain doesn't think in words, it thinks in images. Psychologist Alan Pavio called this the dual coding theory. The idea that information encoded both in language and visuals is remembered far more effectively. When you combine words with images, you double the brain's pathways for recall. So instead of copying endless notes, Start visualizing what you learn. Draw concept maps. Use arrows to show cause and effect. Highlight relationships with color. Turn abstract ideas into simple shapes or sketches. When you do this, you're not just reading, you're seeing. If you're learning history, don't memorize dates. Map the sequence of events. If you're studying physics, sketch how energy moves and transforms. Visual learning turns information into a landscape. And when knowledge becomes a map, you always know where to find it. Memory thrives on structure. Images give it shape. And shape turns learning into story. Feel it to keep it. Memory isn't cold data. It's alive with feeling. You can easily recall an embarrassing moment, a thrilling success, or a time when someone encouraged you. But you probably can't recall the report you read three days ago. Why? Because emotion burns memory into the mind. In the brain, the hippocampus handles memory and the amygdala handles emotion. 
When they activate together, memories become significantly stronger. That's why top students engineer emotional states. They don't just study, they design the environment of learning. Some always study at the same time, training their brain that it's focus hour. Some play the same playlist to create rhythm and familiarity. Others use scent, lighting, or ritual to trigger the memory state instantly. This is called state-dependent learning. The idea that what you learn in one emotional or physical state is recalled more easily in a similar one later. So, before changing your techniques, change your state. Make learning feel alive. Curiosity, calmness, focus. Emotion gives knowledge a heart because what the brain feels, it remembers. Design your memory. Finally, the most overlooked secret of all. Memory isn't built from random facts. It's built from structure. Most people gather information like puzzle pieces without seeing the full picture. Top students, however, build maps. Before learning, they ask, how does this connect to what I already know? They create a framework first, then fill it in. This is structured input, learning through relationships. Here's how. Before studying, define the why, how, and what. During study, use active recall. Afterward, reinforce with spaced review and visuals. Each step builds on the next, turning knowledge into a connected network. If you're preparing for an exam, don't reread aimlessly. Build a knowledge map. List key questions and link ideas with color and shape. Your brain encodes through structure. The clearer the framework, the stronger the recall. The real enemy of memory isn't difficulty, it's disorder. Structure brings clarity, and clarity makes learning effortless. Build your own system, and you become an architect of knowledge. Top performers don't work harder. They design smarter. Memory doesn't belong to the gifted. It belongs to the organized. The five methods you've learned, active recall, spaced repetition, visual connection, emotional state, and structured input form a complete cycle. When learning follows rhythm, memory stops fading. It stabilizes. It becomes who you are. So stop memorizing. Start designing. Design your time. Design your rhythm. Design your environment. Because once your system is strong, your memory becomes unstoppable. Remember this. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Build the system, and your memory will build you.